I guess you can see my screen and the next nine minutes I'll be with you in a journey towards digital AI geospatial services. Okay, well, this is just to set the scene. It was 1998 uh, when Al Gore um, Theorized the concept of digital earth. It was a long time ago. Today we are almost there. And this is the kind of holy grail that we are all trying to reach. So how to use all these data that we are collecting from space, from ground, from a lot of different sensors to make sense out of what's happening on our planet earth. And the geoinformation paradigm is changing fast. So today it's not only about satellite, but it's about location data coming from different sources, satellites, drones, IoT, social media, a lot of data. The, the necessary infrastructure to manage, store and process this data and above all, the data processing and analysis capabilities that we need to deliver what matter most that are reports and insight in a certain sense, analytics with the classical taxonomy between descriptive, predictive, prescriptive uh, analytics. So turning data into knowledge. But not only the paradigm is changing, but also the business models. Today we are moving from the classical one-shot sale towards the subscription economy. And to enable subscription, so recurrent charges, discounts, and payment based on usage, we need to have everything in place that is actually platforms that are able to measure and bill, and also customers that are ready to use and get access to this data in a changing way. So why it matters big data analytics and artificial intelligence? We are a commercial company, and for us, AI means two things. One, to help us in managing our current business better, so increase operational efficiency. This is something uh, not always, uh, let's say, valued, since we're thinking more on the second part, that is use AI to grow new business and so to deliver new insights and build new products. But believe me, the power that AI <laughs> has to improve operational efficiency in companies and also in just special companies is something incredibly valuable and at the end, it has an impact on the EBIT of the company, so on the final earnings. So how to take most of the value out of artificial intelligence? We have a framework. We believe that what we call AI factory is something very important because you need to have a process that allows you to do AI at scale. So pre-processing data, having a farm, where to train models and to test a benchmark AI models against them to quickly come to what is the optimal AI architecture. Once you have that, you don't need just to be um, focused on getting the result out of artificial intelligence model, but you need also to be ready to get bad results that can be refined and with additional training set can re-enter into the circle, into the loop, in order to get the output that you need. So even if you are not getting the final output directly from, from the model, but if you're able to save, let's say, 30, 40, 50, 60, or 70% of the effort that was originally necessary to generate that product, you are on the good way. So a lot of different applications. This is just an overview of how we are using AI to improve our processes. So vessel detection, this is key for our maritime domain awareness services. At it, it is having a dramatic impact on how we are able to scale and how we are able to increase and in, include the other data sources. Building detection, very classical, but still very valuable since there is a lot of saving of time that we can do in this task with artificial intelligence. People detection and tracking, this is uh, something new for a satellite-based company like CAS, but since uh, this drone revolution is taking more and more place, uh, it's something that will become more and more important also in our domain. And down to counting trees. Why that? Because there is a big economic value, for instance, in regulation. 
knowing uh, where orchards are, how they are distributed, uh, and how, for instance, uh, subsidies uh, coming from the European Union are distributed to, to, these, uh, to these farmers. And uh, doing this manually at scale over the whole Italian territory, it's uh, extremely costly. AI can help, uh, let's say, to cut by 80% the associated cost. And the classical examples like vehicle detection in different contexts, and this is very important, and airplanes detection. So a lot of things that we can do with AI to improve our business, but uh, are we really ready for takeoff? Well, this is my personal checklist. So do we have a lot of data partnerships? Yes, with satellite data providers, with drone operators, T-Drones is the new platform that Telespace is launching for drone management and drone exploitation, and other data. So in this case, I'm mentioning some of partnerships we have and a lot of open data. You need data because data is the fuel. But data alone is not enough. You need a skilled AI team. So this is our team distributed in different locations. And with a big news that our big father, Leonardo, is launching a great initiative to recruit 70 researchers across all the divisions and sites to work on big data, HPC, and analytics. The factory, where you can do AI at scale, where you have enough power to run a lot of models in parallel and quickly converge to the optimal AI architecture. Federate infrastructure, we have our own HPC and we are federated with Leonardo HPC that offers enough power to really do whatever we want for quickly training AI models and algorithms. A marketplace, because you want actually to serve and sell this kind of AI power geo, geo analytics. And this is where we are with Cleos, where you can simply get access to data and services in, let me say, an Amazon style marketplace. And the business model, you need to be ready to offer your customers flexible ways to consume your services. So beyond the classical pay-per-use business model, also offer subscriptions where customers can choose their subscription tier that best fits their needs. And what else at the end? The customer needs. You need to know what your customers want because uh, this is where you will bring value. And this is uh, the reason why for us uh, we have uh, long lasting experience in different domains. So from maritime surveillance, DNI, agriculture management, asset and infrastructure management and emergency management. These are incredibly valuable sources of requirements where to focus uh, our attention and our developments. But be aware of the showstoppers. It's, it's not so easy because uh, there are challenges on AI explainability. So to tell your customers why your model is taking uh, that decision, because they don't care about models. They care about, is it with the model developer? Is it with uh, the company that is bringing the requirement, the challenge, uh, and the data set to train uh, the AI model? This is, uh, in my opinion, uh, an open challenge that the industry shall start uh, uh, tackling and challenging, especially from our perspective, uh, since as EGOs we are operating as data providers, so EO data provider, we commercialize uh, Cosmos Climate Data, but we have also a team of AI model developers, and we are also a GI service provider. So for us, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, um, a challenge to understand how to have these different components cooperating together in a fruitful way addressing the above mentioned potential showstoppers. And I close my intervention with uh, our path towards just partial digital AI services. So access raw materials, so make sure you have partnerships with data and contents providers. Secure processing power, so be flexible to deploy your workloads on different infrastructures depending where data are located and where actually you have constraints okay and uh, collect and organize data meaningfully so organize your data layer so that you can quickly access uh, data at scale 
and deploy efficient and scalable processing pipelines. So to do this massive training and retraining of AI models, bring your products and services to life in a marketplace where your customers, mostly self-service, can discover and buy products and services, also using convenient APIs for massive and automatic access. Organize then the customer service because everything works because there are people that are making it work and that can assist your customers in their customer journey. In a word, build Cleos, that is our data and information platform that has very recently come to life, just the end of September this year. Okay, I hope I was more or less in time with the presentation. I hope you enjoyed and feel free to, to address any, any question through the chat or in the session. I will be happy, happy to answer and share my views. So thanks a lot. Hello, I'm Tegan John, the CEO of SI Analytics. It's an honor to introduce our company to the GOI AI conference. Our company is a startup that provides new value for Earth observation and future prediction by analyzing satellite and aerial image data through artificial intelligence technologies. The existing geospatial intelligence was carried out through a very convenient process, you already know, and users had to search their preferred locations and have to browse satellite image footprint to make purchase and receive data via FTP and perform manual analysis with GIS software. But the combination with artificial intelligence making a lot of changes, automate process through artificial intelligence, analytic as a service, and subscription-based service through cloud platforms are also emerging as a very useful tool, as, a, as he mentioned before. And massive amount of satellite image will explode through constellation satellite, and this trend will further increase the demand for the use of artificial intelligence. So, Many companies already know the artificial intelligence allows geospatial intelligence to analyze the data taken from the entire space. And complex and dynamic patterns from human beings and nature have become very accurate and easy to perform like the various use cases below. And I mentioned there are paradox of the cloud service. The analytics as a service allows users to achieve desired results without worrying about the data processing and GPU and AI model management and complex training and inference process. Typical commercial customers can easily use the cloud-based analytics service mentioned before. The customer only need to deliver the requirements and get the corresponding result. This is the easy way to Oh, it's a way to do because they don't have their own satellite image resource. But our company have focused on the defense and intelligence customer. And there are conflicting requirements in the defense and inter intelligence sectors. One of the most popular groups of customers using satellite image in, the, in this world. And customers using satellite image and Depends customer have their own satellite and resource network of satellite images. And they do not want to expose their analysis requirement to external agency and neighboring countries. However, this customer also want mass processing of satellite image easier and easier with artificial intelligence technology. How can customer build their own data set learn their own AI models and influence AI models efficiently without information exposure and cloud platforms. And not only defense customer, but also many organizations lack artificial intelligence experts. So it is hard to gain its own competitive edges about artificial intelligence technology. To summarize, the co customer's requirements are as follows. The analysis tool must be directly connected to the image supply and want to build in data set easily through artificial intelligence and human collaborations. And its process 
the security of the analysis target and region must be maintained inside of the customer site. The AI model should continue to evolve for images that are acquired periodically. A huge amount, amount of satellite image need to be automatically analyzed and the result need to be summarized for decision makers. And it should be directly linked to strengthen national competitive by utilizing the analysis result in various periods. So we define three constraints as follow and show how to solve this problem. Today, we will focus on the end-to-end -end geospatial intelligence process. The most important point is that we need a platform that can easily handle data set construction, model training, and model inference in a one place. And due to the nature of satellite image, it allows AI model to train on their own environment where image data accumulate periodically. And our solutions include tools that provide the highest level of the AI model through continuous model development by our research team and periodically improve the model with accumulate data from our customers. This slide will explain the input and output required for the joint process. The customer utilizes Im images taken from satellite and aircraft. The use of information that we can check through this image, finally, the existing geospatial information is integrated in to obtain comprehensive joint product. As mentioned earlier, this process is still composed of independent component and is conducted through manual analysis using GI software. Our AI native joint solution consists of three software products and each responsible for making AI data set and training AI model and utilizing AI models for customers. So each component is naturally connected to the AI pipeline, allowing users to experience an end-to-end -end joint process. I would like to show one by one. And name software name is Avision, and this software works on the project basis and can analyze satellite image for region of interest. Usually can select a number of AI models that correspond to the region of interest and perform spatial temporal analysis automatically. And the analysis results are automatically documented. And sorry for that. And the higher level of analysis report are automatically delivered to various users, including decision makers. And the second solution is the Rebelos, and this software is an optimized data annotation, annotation tool for satellite image. A team of multiple analyst, analysts can work together and leverage your pre-trained AI model to reduce the human manual report. And our various AI, AI analysis model can provide through our internal research and target detection and classification and infrastructure analysis and monitoring functions are provided. It operated on NVIDIA GPU hardware and provide multi-node and multi-GPU training and inference for satellite image. And I will show one recent use case of our recent research for the building detections. And previous year, USDOD has challenges like the automatically assess damage building after disaster. And we have selected as a top ranker from the real use cases from hum humanitarian disasters. This slide shows the use case of the challenges. And for event, we can show the normal buildings. And after disaster, we can show various damaged buildings and disappeared regions. And these changes are automatically and easily checked using our AI models. And as a NVIDIA Inception partner, we have tested our various hardware and can provide our software with DJX family depending on the size of users and volume of satellite image.
And with the support of NVIDIA, our software has more processing power and we look for more hardware advance in future. And we also making various application use cases in the field of national defense in the South Korea. And our software is operated on the satellite control and utilized system in the Korean Space Agency. And as I mentioned before, our AI models play an important role for the humanitarian assistance and the disaster relief effort while severe global event like the California and Australia. And we provide the value for mankind to make wise decisions through the Earth observations and the AI native joint platform is here. Thank you for listening to our presentations. So, hello everyone. My name is Emra. I'm head of safety and security at TomTom Tom Autonomous Driving. And my speech, of course, I don't want to go in detail what we do um, as a, one of the leading location technology uh, specialists and uh, map provider. But I will mainly focus on the AI, machine learning, and deep learning relation at a very high level. Then I will talk about AI ML use cases that we pursue at TomTom. Then I will talk about the benefits of AI application areas. And last but not least, I will talk about new business models and future applications. I don't think I will need too much time uh, for the sake of sparing more time for the panel discussions. And I will try to warm up for those discussions. So basically, as most of you know, if you look at the definitions of AI, ML, and deep learning, AI is any technique that enables computers to mimic human behavior. Whereas when we talk about machine learning, as you see on the right-hand side, it is like a layer below that. It's the ability to learn without directly being programmed. Last but not least, uh, the deep learning is under machine learning and it's the learning of underlying features in data using deep neural networks. So how we benefit from AI ML in, in TomTom? What areas are we pursuing? So to start with, uh, we cre create tools for enabling production automation. So it is extremely important for us to cover uh, the the roads of, of the world with signs and, and all the uh, layers involved, as you see in the HD map lane model I, I show. Uh, but clearly, we need a higher automation because of the um, request of reflecting reality. So the uh, reality to, to map ratio should be as, as low as possible. Hence, you need to use different AI tools for production automation. The second thing is um, getting or extracting map features. So automatic feature extraction from map making. You can use it for uh, sign detections as an example, for instance. The third area is product analytics. So improving estimated travel time for the navigation purposes, cost optimization, data consumption predictions, and so on. And, and that's shown more or less in, in the um, middle right section. The, another area that we pursue AI ML is traffic flow and traffic, traffic incidents. As you see on the, on the bottom right, for instance, by using uh, GPS probes, we can see uh, the traffic flow and incidents uh, in, in, in various locations of the globe. And this can include, of course, road works, road closures, and so on. And obviously, GPS is not, is not the only source by using multi-sourcing, but um, that's once the, uh, the data is there, we use AI ML. Um, of course, I can talk about many different areas, but another one I can speak of is people analytics, like driver profiles, um, destination predictions by taking into account, of course, the GDPR compliance and stricter privacy rules for other regions, like non-EU regions. But this list can, can be extended. For the sake of time, I will uh, cut it. Why AI ML is appealing? Um, there are 
various reasons if you ask different companies different individuals you can get many different answers but uh, at a higher level it because it's of its powerful performance it, it's becoming more uh, widespread and and it is crucial for for different areas um i at the highest level we can say yes um you can learn and generalize beyond your training data. So using unstructured data, machine learning is suited to open context systems. And another one is um, it enabled computers to learn tasks that seem to be um, infeasible or intractable for computer programs before. So it, it opened a new era. Yes, that these can be benefits but we can also say a lot of um, disadvantages or or difficulties challenges like explainability scalability complexity uh, and and any more so you can learn but the models gets a lot complexer so these are the uh, downsides of ai ml where can we benefit from this in 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 our context so Clearly, autonomous driving is one of the most important ones. Automation and superhuman performance of some tasks, uh, data-driven decision-making, uh, user behavior analytics, uh, production automation, as I mentioned earlier, including the increasing the efficiency of map making, cost reduction, creation of new uh, value streams with new services, like uh, our colleague John uh, showed earlier. Um, map features and updates. Um, clearly, um, the goal is to detect change as early as possible and create new features uh, in the map to benefit, let's say, increase um, the automation, uh, reduce the um, uh, emissions, reduce traffic, and so on. So you need to create enough map features and and have sufficient coverages and and quality and you need to update your map so freshness and up-to-dateness of your map should be ensured um, so that these can be used in applications so hence the automation and ai and and extracting the meaningful data uh, and decisions out of this is extremely important so there can be special purpose map representations um, for certain cases and and breakthroughs in in different fields can also be applied for geospatial use cases and vice versa but the key is not uh, causing silos inside specific fields what are some new business models fields one of which we can think of is connection of map services with natural language processes so nlp based services Another one, as uh, shown earlier in the previous presentation, uh, depending on the industry, of course, using satellite images to automate several tasks like disaster analytic, impact analysis, claim fraud detection, and so on. And another uh, one could be privacy enhancing technologies that depend on the use case, such as differential privacy, federated machine learning, synthetic data sets, secure multi-party computations, and so on, which will become essential uh, when ingesting sensitive personal data. So clearly, um, yes, in one hand, the, the more the data uh, or the better the quality of the data and the more the data, uh, the better your model will work, but it comes with a cost, which is a privacy that you don't uh, need to um, define the individual um, aspects of your data. So you need to ensure privacy in different locations of the globe, but um, sensitivity of the personal data should be utmost importance. So those are all from my side. We are talking about the services business. For example, let us take any large data company or large earth observation project. There are already a lot of companies working on the services, classifying the data with hundreds of teams. So do you see a shift from that perspective from large teams uh, creating data to smaller teams creating data in the future? And where would these kind of people work on new creative tasks with AI? Clearly, 
as as I mentioned during my speech, uh, the goal is to have as as much data as possible. But um, we need to also ensure uh, the privacy of this data and the quality of this data, and whether the data is uh, unstructured to to get meaning of this. So data mining, classification, and so on. So um, the the Decentralized the data is, uh, hence uh, there are many disadvantages in this sense. So there are needs for pooling of this data to 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 benefit in a in a broader audience, uh, as long as those those aspects that I mentioned are are taken into account. So privacy by design and and making sure that the data. Um, is 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 information related so just because you have uh, sufficient or successive data you it doesn't mean that you can get the, the best benefit out of it so what we see from from our perspective uh, is that actually uh, we will progressively bring more ai into current production processes this means that the data scientist team Will be more and more integrated uh, with the cartographic production team uh, enabling uh, and empowering uh, cartographers uh, to use uh, also complex uh, ai models uh, autonomously so this means that uh, cartographers are the best to know which are the results they want to achieve and so they can validate them but uh, they have no clue about uh, how machine learning and deep learning work so they just need the tools uh, for instance to improve and refine the training set without having uh, any knowledge about epochs or uh, rates and all these things. But they just want to have uh, a tool that facilitate their job. So th their requirements is uh, the kind of magic wand. They start digitizing uh, two, three, four, ten buildings, and then they get the map done. And so this is where I see that we will progressively go with the AI team more and more supporting cartographic production. I think the AI will be applied to all areas where the, each customer and organization has come from geospatial potential through the remote sensing and to provide the new analysis values. And in the meantime, we have used the just the static map. It was the map that was updated slowly over the fixed surface at a certain interval of time. But from now on, we will see very interactive map and not just border and location, buildings, load, sort of that, but dynamic interactive map based on the topic needed by various industrial groups and the driving force is, is certainly AI will be have the very fundamental role for that purpose of the map. Talking about the business models, uh, have you already uh, started to see that shift happening currently or do you see that shift would be happening in the next f two to three years? Uh, I believe that, uh, at least from our perspective, we have not seen that yet. So we all have been reading a lot of books and a lot of examples from other industries. We see that uh, from, uh, let's say, data providers, uh, more new offers are coming, like uh, you can buy, uh, I don't know, 25 gigabyte package from uh, of data from, from Airbus, for example, or from Axar, but still uh, having customers that are coming and subscribing to analytics services is still uh, quite of a niche, at least what we see from, from our perspective. Nevertheless, uh, we are invested uh, we have made a big investment with uh, with Cleos uh, to be ready for when uh, this uh, this shift uh, will happen, and also to be there dri to drive a bit uh, this shift. I can tell from Italian perspective that Italian government is pushing a lot of money from the space economy investment uh, to make uh, real uh, this shift, uh, at least for the public administration, and then in this way have also a positive impact on the commercial market. The basic business models can be derived from the AI is already very widespread. And for example, processing labeled data or the provide the service with the trained models are well spread. Although we are currently use the small satellite from like the planet, and we will see new types of applications 
that have never been seen before through the extremely short revisit time through the constellation satellite market that will become more active. And we may have to rethinking not only the service platforms, but also the entire ground stations. Eventually, submeter resolution and revisit time will lead to many business models, not just defense and intelligence domain and the commercial domains will be explored as a remote sensing and applications as a GIS. Uh, for sure, we have AI deployed, but um, working in different kinds of maps. So if we talk about ST map uh, and others map and HD map, obviously the requirements are different. So the higher the automation, the more safety critical application becomes and uh, being uh, non-deterministic, mainly uh, a black box uh, concept, then ensuring the, the required determinism and, and com confidence from the output, it becomes harder. So if this is an application where where the automation and speed and, 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 and uh, cost is clearly uh, is an, concern then ai is obviously being used but when we talk about autonomous driving where mainly i'm working on so uh, that uh, when do you know that the, the data is sufficient are you sure that you cover the edge cases uh, are you sure that your verification and training data have, have sufficient sufficiency and how do you know if if the output is reliable or not. So then you need to involve uh, quality assurance at the end. So it becomes a trade off of, yes, automation and speed and reflecting reality versus safety, security. And, and, and so uh, to sum up, the application leads the decision on how much you can trust on AI depending on the services and, and the map type and navigation we use, we, are, we already have AI in, in deployment and in usage, but for the higher automation requirements, uh, clearly we need to ensure that we, there are enough quality assurance uh, to, to make sure that this can be used in a safety critical application. How, how are your clients reacting from the real, reliability perspective to the uh, outputs of AI data? Well, actually, simply, they don't care in the sense that uh, they are buying a service from us. So we have a service level agreement and we need uh, to, to, to comply with that. So it's our, let's say, it's, it's, it's our job to make sure that uh, we have full control on product and that uh, we, we still allocate uh, enough effort for, for quality, control, quality control before product delivery to our customer. I fully agree that uh, it will require also a shift in the mindset of, of the customer, the fact that to accept a certain level of uh, uncertainty regarding uh, the, the the quality of the output and this is all uh, the discussion about uh, ai explainability this is something that for geoinformation is not yet there but for instance uh, we as part of leonardo company we are already seeing how our colleagues uh, from uh, iris structures and from avionics uh, they are experiencing uh, this point uh, when qualifying new components uh, that have to be on board that are powered by artificial intelligence and that cannot fail because of uh, uh, safety of flight. Yeah, so to Gion, the use case you have described, like the disaster use cases where ground verification becomes very difficult because data sets have to be generated very fast. How, the, how does the reliability aspect of AI models come in here? It depends on what is the ma major applications for AI model and I think the best level of the AI product is when the customer doesn't realize the AI models are working background but they can treat not just satellite image and uh, today the flexibility of the recent deep learning models can also show the excellence of the simultaneously viewing and extracting characteristics from the multimodal data 
So that kind of artificial intelligence can handle the satellite image and numerical data and structured data like the text, signal, and etc. And those kind of the input data is also being modeled in a one single AI systems. And at that level of the AI product and the customer will realize the status of the artificial intelligence systems will be higher than the current level of AI systems.